it re all right and i'm going to switch over to the other tab I'm going to go ahead and get started here with a quick intro. Um, as Adam said, uh, prior to the recording starting, this is uh, the goal of this meeting is to give everyone an update uh, on where the teams within the inaccurately named reading group are with their annual plan, a uh, particular kind of status update on uh, Q1 goals, and then looking forward a couple of quarters for planning for Q2 and Q3, and particularly with an eye towards sort of why we're working on those things and also how uh, the dependencies we have on each other are things that we will need. So we're going to go by product owner and Olga is going to kick us off. So Olga, whenever you are ready, I would say we're going to get started. Hello, everyone. Can everybody hear me? Yes. 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 Wonderful. Um, cool. Well, first slide. It is. Okay, um, so while a lot of the teams this year will be focusing on newer editors, our goal was a little bit different. Um, we want to better support current editors, uh, in particular veteran editors, by bringing their preferred workflows to the mobile site. And we hope that this will make mobile contributions a little bit easier and potentially increase the rate of mobile contributions among veteran editors. And we're also working on a second project throughout the year, which is to invest in the mobile front end Minerva new front end architecture. And this is basically a refactoring of our code uh, so that it's easier to use for developers and so that it is ready for future architectural changes that might come. Next slide. Okay. So for our first project this quarter, we mostly wanted to focus on research um, to find out which pages were the most important for editors on mobile, as well as how to sort of approach how we're going to navigate those pages and how we're going to be offering this functionality. And in terms of navigation, generally making the mobile website for these users feel a little bit more familiar and feel a little bit more like they have similar options to what they would have on desktop um, in the rector skin. So what we did is we conducted around 30 interviews at Wikimania. Um, we've been working on determining the list of pages that we want to provide special attention to. We tested a couple of pro prototypes for the navigation, and we're slowly co collecting somewhat of a task force of interested editors that we can reach out to directly for feedback so they can test their prototypes, et cetera. And um, the last couple of weeks, we've also been looking a little bit more into uh, the data that we currently have around mobile editing and around who's using what skin and why, and also which pages and which special pages are being used the most. And for Invest in the Mobile Front End and Urban New Front End Architecture, we're working on two of uh, the epics. Uh, the first one is Automate Asset Bundling in Mobile Front End Minerva. And the second, speed up unit, unit test execution and increase code coverage. And we'll also be working on those throughout the first two quarters of the year. Next okay, slide. Okay. Yes. Okay. I have a quick question. What is, so asset bundling, it sounds like there's an audit, it sounds like there's a manual process that is being turned into an automated process. Yes. And, there, and there's a lot of that in also the unit tests. And there's a lot of kind of automating and basically a lot of work that will make, um, developing a lot easier and faster hopefully fantastic i mean i think the one like I, this is probably just a detail but it might be interesting to add something about that in the goal itself like invest in the architecture to make it make development faster or something like that just for so when people see it, they know what they know what we're doing just minor detail The consternation. You're talking about like on the wiki itself, right, or where the goal is described, making sure that that outcome of. Yes. Okay, did you hear that? <laughs> I think you probably might be. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I can take it. All right, I'll take it. I can take it off. Can you guys still hear? Yeah, the audio is, I can. I can hear bits and pieces, but I can't hear everything. Am I coming in okay? Yes. You're fine. You want to pick 
Okay. Uh, Yeah, it's not important, Olga. It's it's emailable. <laughs> okay, okay. I guess I'll keep going. Um, okay, so for the next quarter for advanced mobile contributions, we'll continue doing some kind of testing and working on our prototypes and making sure we're focusing on working with our communities, making sure that we're covering their needs. This is our first project that is focused more on editors, and we're really kind of looking in forward to sort of building relationships with specific people that we can reach out to and get feedback from because feedback is kind of um, more important now than it was in the past. And we'll also begin development on the navigation, the opt-in experience. And for the refactoring project, we'll be continuing those two epics that um, we started in this quarter. And then Q3 and Q4, uh, we'll continue developing, um, we'll probably, hopefully in Q2, we'll finish the navigation and opt-in and all of that, and we might even start in the special pages. Q3, we're hoping to uh, continue doing some of the special pages, pick a, for, uh, pick a first set of those that we can include in the first deployment, play the first set of wikis, uh, iterate a little bit more, add more special pages, and then deploy everywhere. And then Q3 and Q4 will also be doing the second two epics in the refactoring project, which is making Minerva completely um, independent of mobile front end and also reviewing and refactoring Minerva components. Um, next slide. Next slide. Oh, it's there. It's just taking the second I'll go. Give it. Oh, okay. You're on your. We're on, we're seeing the Y slide at this point. I'll read it off of the. I have the deck open. I'll read it off of that. Okay. So why? Um, basically, we want to put into this because. We're not left out along with this process of focusing on new editors that we also are providing tools for the people that have been doing this for a longer amount of time and that we also have tools for when we convert these new editors into veteran editors and our other main motivation was also moving editors away from using the desktop mode on their phone which is not a very good experience and providing them a better more mobile focused experience and we're hoping that exposing these special pages in the Minerva skin, which is the approach that we're taking, will give us both kind of that um, good functionality, good mobile functionality, but also this kind of familiarity and being able to access the tools in places where they would be expected, uh, similar to what Vector can do. And for invest in the mobile front end, Minerva new front end architecture, I mentioned this a little bit in the beginning, but it's basically around improving our infrastructure so we can be prepared for the future and also so development can be a little bit more smooth. And so, you know, potentially as well, we can attract kind of different, more new developers to the foundation and to the team. Next slide. Um, so we'll be working with community relations very closely, mostly on kind of, like I said, building, being able to build a group and expand uh, into as many people from the community as we can get involved as possible. We want to hear from a lot of this group of editors and we want to be able to um, identify what the best venues to talk to them are. And in particular, we'll also want to expand this idea of like a task force of people that are very closely involved in the project that we can talk to directly. And we'll also be working with the editing and growth teams, mostly because we're touching similar things while we're not working on the exact same functionality. We'll want to coordinate with these teams and make sure that the decisions that are made throughout these processes don't um, overlap in some way and also that our objectives are aligned uh, to make sure that we don't do things um, in a way that doesn't make sense later on in the future. Do we have a platform evolution dependency or a tech dependency here, Olga? Um, yes. So the second, um, 
the second project, the big refactoring project, that one is also a part of the platform of evolution program. And so for that, we'll probably be checking in mostly through conversations and quicker check-ins um, to make sure that we're that we're be we're able to work along with them with whatever comes out of that program as well. Awesome. Web, and we're going to hand over to Charlotte for up to Android. All right. This is exciting. Let's get started. <laughs> Go for it. All right. So Android's goal this year um, is to increase mobile contributions. Um, we are particularly focusing on attracting and retaining new contributors um, in emerging uh, markets or historically underserved um, markets and languages. So these are uh, markets or languages whose you know presence in the world does not currently match their presence in wiki projects. So we want to make contributing to the various projects um, by the app intuitive so that it's um, it's easy to use. You can understand where you have to go and what you have to do to make your unique contribution, but also supportive. So for people who are new, we want to make sure that you know they, they feel um, like they are supported through the process of learning all of the, the new rules, processes, guidelines, stuff like that, that you have to know um, in order to make a useful um, wiki contribution. Next slide. All right, so our Q1 goals, um, last quarter we built um, two prototypes for how to redesign um, the navigation on the Android app to bring the article reading experience to, to the forefront. Um, we think, you know, if you are using the Wikipedia app, then what you probably want to do is to read articles. That's been kind of a, a background thing until now. So we're bringing, um, the ability or the, the functionality of reading articles forward in two different ways. We're about to begin testing on those this week. We're very excited to see the results. Um, In-app notifications. So we are beta testing a, a version zero of in-app notifications um, that we hope will encourage repeat editing. So that's code complete. Um, we are doing some analytics on it and we're looking for QA and design sign off. And then we have started engaging with the community around editing features. Um, Chris has been absolutely wonderful at helping us with that. We have a page on MediaWiki. It's called Android Editing Features. So if you're seeing this later, you want to post on the talk page, let us know. We are trying um, to, to get um, our sort of later iterations of the roadmap out in front of the community for their feedback and input. Next slide. All right, so Q2, that now we get sort of into the, the meat of how we hope to attract newer contributors to edit on the app. So right now, in almost all of the languages, um, users can um, edit Wikidata descriptions um, on the, the pages where there is not a another description. Um, through the, the app, we want to allow um, users or, you know, put forward for users um, other sort of little things that they can add or edit or translate um, so that there is always something um, that they feel that they can do a contribution, although it might be small, that has a big impact um, that they can make. So we'll be prototyping that during quarter two and hopefully productionizing it in later quarters. We are following the lead of iOS and mobile web and doing other features like native talk pages or watch lists um, that we hope will be very um, useful to not only our newer contributors, but also people who have been contributing for years. Um, and we'll be integrating additional notifications and things like that. So although Android is focused on those newer contributors, the things that we're doing, we hope will be of uh, great use and value to people who have been contributing for a long time as well. Next slide, please. All right, so 
Why are we doing this? Why are we focused on those historically underserved markets and those emerging markets? Um, and the simple one word answer is equity. So we can attract content that we might not otherwise have gotten via targeting those markets. Um, we can make sure that communities um, who are in those markets are feeling sort of supported to attract and retain um, contributors. And we want to make sure that contributing is a rewarding experience for people. It's something that they're doing probably in the comfort of their homes. Um, and newer contributors, they don't always sort of feel that there is a community necessarily. So we want to make sure that um, people, they kind of feel the love. We're spreading the love around. And we hope, like I said, um, that all contributors will eventually feel like this is this is something that is is supporting them and is making their um, lives as contributors easier. All right, next slide. I think it's the last one. All right. So our friends uh, in common, so uh, Ramsey and Amanda, we have been um, talking with them about the edit action feed um, and how we can um, allow people to make a contribution to uh, the structured data project through the Android app. Um, we'll be working with the reading infrastructure folks on other parts of the edit action feed. And then, as I said, we'll be working with both iOS and mobile web to figure out sort of where we go with talk pages and watch lists. And thank you, thank, thank, thank you to the um, community liaisons team or whatever they're called now, the design team. Um, and obviously, my friends in Android, y'all are awesome. I love you guys so much. All right, the end. Dusty in here. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, it's going to be a hard act to follow, but I will do the talk about iOS and iOS. I'm just going to check the chat real quick. <laughs> uh, great. So, uh, uh, iOS's part in the portfolio this year is really to focus on increasing the efficiency and usability of the existing editing flows for mobile. Um, so sort of uh, along in between the, the Android uh, new editors focus and the web extreme experience editors, all the tools focus, we're trying to focus on sort of those people that maybe are, you know, a couple times a week, they're already editing, but we want to make the experience uh, particularly delightful and efficient for uh, mobile in a way that have not so far. So. Um, I think we kind of sum this up in our uh, project page and mission statement as basically bringing the same user experience quality and focus on usability that we brought to the reading experience over the last couple of years to the editing, and in particular sort of the core of editing uh, the Wikipedia. Go ahead and go to the next. So in terms of Q1, we had uh, sort of similar to Android, we had some wrap up work for our readers. Um, that, that's built into this quarter. So that is actually done as of last week at shift. Um, there's going to be a bug fix release probably this week, but uh, pretty much done substantially with that update. Um, the next big feature that we're just starting working on that is actually for editing is just Wikipedia description editing. This is a feature that already exists on Android. Um, we're just porting it over. Um, part of the reasoning for this is because it's already been proven to be successful on Android. And also because, uh, as you guys all know, this is moving on to editing features is new for these teams. And so we wanted to pick a feature that was pretty well defined and pretty well fleshed out so that we could kind of dip our toes into some safe waters. So hopefully we'll be knocking that out this quarter and just starting on development. Um, and then the real sort of bulk of the work looking forward has been a lot of design research. So I also just want to call out Carolyn yet again. Got a lot of stuff gets shared over the status updates, but she's just putting in a ton of time and work and thought on uh, comparative analysis of editing tools, but also uh, best ways to do wiki text entry, best ways to show wiki text syntax, and just kind of again thinking from a user and usability perspective about the. Uh, next. Yeah, and all those updates, you know, not just from iOS team, but from across the organization, have been like special treats in the weekly updates. Like I read lots of them and 
there just just to see the quality of that work and how that's going into the, the product is really exciting. Yeah, and so looking forward sort of past the you know, descriptions again, uh, as you've seen the updates, you've seen uh, we kind of in the design and thinking, uh, product thinking, we focus on wiki text keyboard with predictive text entry. So um, predictive text, just to explain very briefly, means sort of like you've started something. We know there's only certain ways to finish it. We should just offer you shortcuts to finish it that way rather than you having to remember what's the rest of the syntax for this, the two squiggles or three squiggles at the end. Um, Highlighting ability, so taking our existing highlighting, syntax highlighting, and making it, um, you know, again, particularly mobile friendly and using some sort of more modern best practices around readability of content. Um, and then just sort of, again, we have some basic usability fixes that we need to, to get knocked out, sort of the, uh, you know, submitting, literally submitting an edit, that kind of thing, just clean up, Not, nothing too exciting there, but preliminary work to make sure the rest of it fit together at a sudden. Um, for Q3 and Q4, we'll probably be focusing on talk and user talk improvements. Um, so obviously talking about pages and getting feedback on user talk is an important part of editing process and collaboration process that's not well supported in the apps. Um, and as Charlotte mentioned, we just want to kind of take a look with the other teams involved at sort of the best ways to implement this for mobile, especially on mobile. Entirely new for us. Um, and then along with that, again, is sort of a, another core component of the editing collaboration experience, which is visual diffs and page history, um, some of which have sort of uh, prototype versions already in the apps, but are not uh, particularly super usable or well integrated with the rest of the editing. Next slide. So I'm actually not going to talk so much about why we're working on this general area, but why we picked the Wikitext editing surface. So uh, many, many thanks to our Android uh, compadres, um, and Dimitri in particular, who put together a prototype of the keyboard, the text keyboard, um, and that got done in time for uh, Wikimania testing and some other testing at the, at the hackathon. Um, and that just really got a very positive response. We think it's a way to get some really quick utility. It's something that doesn't exist on mobile yet. Um, and so that kind of gave us the sort of uh, initial focus for that. Related to that then is once you're working on the surface, you might as well be working on the whole editing surface. And so that's kind of where our initial thinking around what we're gonna be delivering first, right? Is that if you're going to be editing a talk page, you still have to be editing with the text. If you're gonna be editing an article, you still have to be editing with and so sort of focusing on this shared tool that is core to so many of these workflows gives us some, um, hopefully significant bang for the buck in terms of uh, rolling out other features in the future. Um, and also I think part of it was just Carolyn did some pretty amazing design research and we all thought that there were some real big wins that we could get here, that there's some real improvements that are possible over what we have now and that they're very tangible and deliverable. And so we wanted to sort of knock those out where some of the other things that we have to figure out like talk pages are a little bit more vague about how we're going to figure that out and obviously have some more community aspects to them that we're going to have to figure out and have a collaborative relationship. Uh, and then I just also wanted to talk very, very briefly about sort of how iOS is going to be deciding on features. Um, so I know, you know, we're, we're trying to present as much forward thinking roadmap as we can, but as a team and as a product manager, I really try to focus on sort of the sources of where features come from. And so the priorities of those rather than a feature list, a roadmap, so that people understand not six months from now what feature is going to be delivered, but how will we decide what feature is going to be delivered. And kind of have four sources of feedback that we're looking at. We're looking at user feedback, those people who actually use the app, community obligations. So that's things that the community needs us to do in order to support mobile editing and be a functional part of the existing duration systems. Research recommendations. So I also wanted to just kind of give a big thanks to um, Abby and James and Marque, who, uh, well, Abby and James, who did the, the amazing amount of work on the research taxonomy, workflow taxonomy that helps us make decisions and helps us uh, sort of figure out um, how to piece features out um, in a way that is hopefully sustainable and sensible. Um, and then last, technology needs. Uh, so just, again, editing has not been our focus. We have some preliminary work with sort of understanding that feedback that we'll be putting in time that we're on. Uh, Next slide. So just briefly on our dependencies, again, kind of 
echoing what other people have said, community resources department or group. Um, particularly for us on the iOS side, we have a little bit of a unique challenge in that um, we have to find people who are interested in what we're doing. They exist, but it's uh, unlike many other teams here, we don't get a shower of feedback whenever we uh, post things. We mostly get uh, sort of polite nods. And so one thing we're trying to do is figure out how to sort of really engage um, people who are iOS users and who will edit in the app um, to give us you know, meaningful feedback and kind of be beta participants or uh, um, one challenge that we're kind of thinking through is uh, language support. So uh, we are targeting some work needs that we don't have language capabilities for. Um, and given the way that we tend to develop and try to be really focused on users and user feedback, um, that kind of feedback loop is a little bit going to be a challenge when we are um, supporting um, people in Korean, for example, a language that nobody on the team um, speaks, reads, or writes. So we're trying to figure out how to resource that and work with the CLs to make sure that that's a sensible, that that gets handled sensibly. Um, data transition, so this isn't really dependent outside the team, but we are on iOS trying to get more data oriented and really uh, implement uh, a better understanding of our users through collecting a lot more quantitative data uh, around what we're doing, especially editing flows, and Chelsea is really leading the attack on that, but it will take support from other people on the data product analytics team and the uh, analytics um, and then last, but definitely not least, is we'll, let, we'll be talking with the editing team, uh, Dan Gary, and, and the sort of what used to be known as the visual editor team, um, parsing, which you'll hear from Subu later on, and the community tech groups just for their expertise, right? So I don't think we have any upstream build dependencies for this couple quarters, but we do, we are going to be having questions and need uh, pointing to documentation and those kinds of things. I think that's it for iOS. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Uh, I think uh, Ramsey, you're up. Yes. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's go to the first slide, please. All right. Our team mission, for now at least, is to build out and launch the first part of the SDC project, which is uh, insane and extremely complicated, but I'll try to condense it all into a few minutes for the purposes of this meeting. Um, our first launch targets are going to be multilingual file caption and then the PIX tags along with other uh, wiki-based style statements. Uh, this work is primarily targeted to people who already know what structured data is on the uh, Commons community as well as the uh, wiki data. Uh, next slide, please. For Q1, we have three major goals. Um, goal one is to do all the tech work to actually jam the wiki-based stuff into the, the text pages and make it all look nice and neat and integrated together. Um, that is a very complex thing to do. Um, it is a new thing to do. Uh, there's no prior art to refer to, so we're really inventing things as we go. Um, but the work is in progress. It's on schedule. We hope it's uh, complete within the next couple of weeks. Uh, second goal is working on prototypes for the thing we're going to launch in January, which is the fix statements. Uh, that is also insanely complicated and complex. Um, and we are making progress right now on the uh, search aspect of uh, the fix and other statements. And then next month we will do um, upload research and file page work. So that is also in progress and so far relatively on schedule. Uh, relatively. Um, and our last goal is to actually document a lot of the stuff that we kind of uh, invented, particularly for uh, search and how the new features for STC uh, work within Elasticsearch and some of the other search functionalities. Uh, next slide, please. For the forthcoming quarters, uh, we've got even more work to do. Uh, we will actually launch uh, multilingual file captions uh, in October, hopefully crossing fingers and toes. Uh, the quarter after that, we will actually launch the depicts the the tags along with the other wiki-based style statements. Uh, next slide. Why are we doing captions and depict statements? Well, for different reasons. One, uh, again, we're doing a lot of new stuff here. Um, it's in many ways kind of a uh, reinvention of 
the guts of commons. And there's just a lot of new stuff built on top of new stuff. And to be safe, we're starting with a very small um, MVP, if you will. And the, the smallest element we could do was file captions. Um, once that's released, so much shortly afterwards, we'll start doing the big stuff and the, uh, the complicated, the PICS features and the implementation of other uh, wiki-based style statements that will make the commons look a lot like Wikidata. Uh, that work is critically important. It's the foundation of all the subsequent work that we'll be doing for the project. Um, and in many ways, it's, it's the, the game-changing ch game features that will uh, define the success of the project. So the, the plan has always been start small, but then very shortly after, uh, go big. And um, we really couldn't think of a better way to do it because, again, this particular feature uh, being the picks and uh, other statements are just really, really critical to the rest of the work that we have to do. Uh, next slide, please. Dependencies. Well, at times it seems like we uh, recruit engineers from every department and audiences uh, at, at one point or another, but um, Right now we're working uh, with the MCDR team slash core platform team. Um, we've gotten a lot of work from community liaisons, mostly Keegan, who's embedded with our team, but we also recruit some other liaisons that necessary now and then. Uh, product analytics team, uh, we haven't been using them too much recently, but that's gonna change like as of today or tomorrow uh, to help us figure out some uh, wiki data stuff and also uh, helps define metrics later on. And uh, Ben's team, the GLAM folks, Sandra, Alex, et cetera, have been really helpful in making sure that we're uh, covering grant requirements and uh, meeting the needs of our institutional partners in uh, the GLAM world. And many, many, many thanks to everyone who has been involved in the project so far. Um, very soon you're going to start to see the, uh, the fruits of all that labor and we'll actually have features out there in the wild. That's it. Okay. I'm going to um, try to step in and cover stuff on infrastructure. Um, Joaquin's unavailable today. So the reading infrastructure, readers infrastructure team, uh, exists to support the different teams within audiences and specifically in readers. We work on uh, APIs, service endpoints, things of that nature. We're going to be pretty heavily involved in the platform evolution program throughout the remainder of the fiscal year and probably beyond. And we're also um, starting work on what is called the better use of data program. So that's improving our practices and technology around um, event logging and A-B tests and things of that nature. In Q1, we've been doing a bunch of things. Uh, we've been helping out with the multi-content revisions project. We've also been um, taking over support of our maps infrastructure. We continue work on the page content service, mobile content service, um, also known as PCS and MCS. We are improving the summary endpoint uh, so that we can get things like preview cards for Wikidata. Um, we're getting more requirements for that so that we can build the service uh, or enhance the service the right way. And uh, as I mentioned, we're working on better use of data. This quarter has uh, been a quarter where we're focusing a lot on hiring and um, establishing the relationships or like firming up the relationships with our different partners across the organization. Next quarter, and I'll only talk about next quarter because we only have a, a little bit of time left. Um, we'll continue working on PCS. We'll continue working on better use of data. Um, we'll be reaching out to a number of our colleagues to talk through what we need um, in terms of requirements for instrumentation and A-B testing. So we'll wanna be upgrading our um, event logging libraries, for example, on the client side. And we'll continue to be involved with the Platform Evolution Program. Uh, specifically, uh, we're involved with the Wikimedia Tech Conf, uh, technical conference, where we'll be talking through um, where we wanna take our platform over the next three to five years. 
as always, we'll continue to support the different client teams. Um, for example, uh, helping out the uh, Android team and I think the iOS team in due time um, on edit feed prototyping. And I'll hand the mic over to Subu now. Just a second while I disable my microphone. Uh, that's a lot. <laughs> Hands and many pies. Bring us all. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Can you go to the first slide, Adam? So broadly, the team mission since 2016 is to look at the three pieces of what we do, which is the input Wikitext, the output HTML, and the tools that go with these tools. And um, so this year, the primary focus is on the tooling, the parsers. So as, some, as you might know, there are two different parsers right now. One is the classic PHP parser that just converts Wikitext to HTML. And the other is Parsoid, which can convert both Wikitext to HTML and HTML to Wikitext, and is used to support tools like Visual Editor, Content Translation, Linting, uh, et cetera. And uh, the broad goal of this last piece is to get at a single parser instead of having two different parsers for different uh, needs. And there are two components to this. One is to uh, bridge the differences between the output and the features between the parser and PHP parser. And we have been at it since about 2015 and most recently we placed ID as one of the projects along this. And since 2018, uh, the, we've been working to move Parsoid to core in order to address the architectural and language complaints of the Parsoid. Next slide, please. So in terms of goals, Q1, uh, once again, broadly the two goals, high level goals are uh, one, prototype and evaluate a parser port to PHP. And the second one is to reduce the differences between parser and PHP parser. And for the first goal, we've been working uh, to implement testing and performance features in parser. Some work was done the previous quarter, and this quarter we are porting all of that code to PHP and more to follow. And uh, the main highlight for the second goal is to address the media output difference between PHP parser and parser. So some work has been done, and it's right now stored on other maintenance and other uh, goals uh, here. And we'll pick this up again. Next slide, please. So no surprises in terms of the high-level goals next quarter as well. But specifically, I think uh, we're going to port more code to PHP and evaluate performance. And uh, for the second component, uh, we want to kind of finish bridging the media output difference between PHP parser and Parsoid, as well as complete language variant support. And also, uh, there is some work we are doing to kind of uh, make sure we can support extensions that are currently being done in PHP we can, that we can also support in Parsoid. That's it. Thanks, everybody, for uh, presenting your roadmaps. I'm going to turn off the recording now. Uh, we're at meeting time. Um, I suspect some people might have some questions. I uh, actually need to drop off of the meeting, um, so I'll leave it to, to you all if you'd like to discuss further. Otherwise, um, I'd recommend people uh, catch up over email um, or uh, video chat.